Welcome back, everyone. We're back with Lisa, Sarah and Charlie, and uh, they got some important points to make. Let's start with you, Charlie. Yeah, look, Steve, uh, in, in your book, you, you taught me the power of decentralization and looking at things on a local level. Uh, we're starting to see where this is really concentrated. You have uh, about 20 percent of the U.S. population in New Jersey, New York and California, specifically in L.A. Mm -hmm. County and New York City. They're accounting for about 59 percent of the cases. So they're punching way above the weight of the even population percentage they have in the country. And so what I'd like to see is an even mm -hmm. heavier focus and more national unity about assisting those areas and also relieving some of the quarantine and allowing the American entrepreneur to be liberated. Day 15 comes some of the other parts of the country that have not been as impacted because because as you talked about, there are real economic consequences to these sorts of quarantines that have been going on. Yeah, exactly. This blanket shot down of everywhere. Great, great point. Lisa, uh, you had a reaction to Larry Kudlow's comments earlier. I almost jumped out of my seat when he said potentially 12 weeks. I mean, will, will any of these policy prescriptions that Congress and the White House are working on going to matter at that point? Bank of America estimates that by next week we could see 3 million unemployment uh, claims. So it seems to me it's more critical for the White House and Congress to work with public health officials to figure out how do you slow, slow the spread of the coronavirus and protect vulnerable communities and individuals without utterly crashing the economy? Because does anyone actually think 12 weeks of this is not going to completely destroy the economy? Oh my gosh. That's Sarah. <laughs> That's such an important point. I mean, Lisa has a very important, important point here, and this is something that the administration, I'm sure, is looking at very closely, something that they are going to deal with in this 15-day mark when it comes up, and it's something they have to deal with. We all do. But I think the important thing, Steve, is that we, we all have common sense. We use that common sense. We know how to take care of ourselves and our loved ones. We listen to uh, the medical professionals, but we use our common sense and find a way to not only curb the coronavirus, but also ensure that our economy doesn't come crashing down. I believe that the American people can weather this storm and that we will move forward and that we will be victorious in this, but we can only do that with common sense. And just, just in the few seconds that are left, Charlie, I'd just like you to wrap it up in, in terms of how we you know, come together over this and stop the political attacks. Some of the commentary you're hearing from the media using it as an excuse to attack President Trump, that's got to stop, don't you think? Yeah, it's nonsense. Look, the president has done a phenomenal job. And I can tell you, the president has been the most, he's adapted quick into quick leadership form, almost like wartime form, quicker than any other president we could have possibly imagined. He has brought the country together against an invisible enemy. And I'm telling you, the president will make the right decisions to get this economy back and roaring in, in quick order. And he will be able to allocate the resources mm -hmm. needed in these parts of the country that need them. And he will liberate the American entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Sarah. Thank Great you. discussion tonight. Thank you for joining us. And do please come back again next Sunday when the next revolution will be televised.